أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأكتة تام لساني يفكو كولي and welcome to the Islamic Medical Association of South Africa's Health Matters comprehensive chat. My name is Najwa Mohamed Ladi and with me this evening I have another IMA member with me. She's a specialist dermatologist. Dr. Dilshad Asma. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Dr. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for having me on the It's show. only a pleasure. Shukran so much for joining us this evening live from Cape Town. And as I mentioned, Dr. is a dermatologist. So inshallah, our topic this evening, we will be discussing different types of eczemas. And as our viewers are we are ready the lines will be open immediately inshallah for you to make use of the specialist in studio anything relating to questions about different types of eczemas but before we do that let's start off with the terbia of tonight's program inshallah bismillahirrahmanirrahim this is about prophet ayub allah tested these prophets so one of them was the prophet ayub peace be upon him who suffered many afflictions including skin diseases Part of his body were covered with horrific sores. He had many ugly looking ulcers on his face and his hands. The sores were full of worms. It is narrated that he picked up those worms which fell from his abscess and praised Allah for creating them. Above all, his false friends attributed his calamities to his sins. They ridiculed and looked down upon him. All the persons deserted him with the exception of his faithful wife Rahima. She also grew tired of him in the long run and prayed for his death. She cursed her husband for retaining integrity in Allah. When Prophet Ayyub, peace be upon him, was in an extremely pathetic condition, he prayed. Truly, adversity was afflicted me, and you are most merciful of all who show mercy. Chapter 21, verse 83. Allah accepted his prayer. The Holy Quran affirms, when we heard his prayer and removed his adversity from which he suffered, and we gave him his household and the like thereof along with them, a mercy from our store and remembrance for the worshippers. That's good. Chapter 21, verse 84. Allah turned to him with mercy. He was commanded to strike the earth with, this, with his foot. He complied with the order, and water from the spring gushed forth. He took a bath with the water and got cured from his evil disease. After this, he was restored to prosperity. The Prophet Ayyub salam, knelt and prayed, expressing a deep sense of gratitude to Almighty Allah. He never forgot his favors, mercy, and love. The Prophet Ayyub, peace be upon him, was one of the celebrated prophets. His example illustrates that those who remain patient under stress of all circumstances are never deprived of high rewards. The Holy Quran affirms, and surely we try you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth and crops, but give glad tidings to the, to the steadfast, who, when a misfortune befalls them, say, Lo, we are Allah's possession of Allah, and to him shall we surely return. Sure, such are, those, are they on whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy. Such are the rightly guided. Chapter 2, verse 155 to 157. Sadaqallahu al-Adhim. MashaAllah, really, really beautiful tarbiyah. And it, it relates to our topic of discussion this evening, which is we're discussing different types of eczema with our honored guest. I'm a member live in studio. But before we start off our program in terms of discussing different types of eczemas, the Islamic Medical Association weekly project this week inshallah we will be discussing various publications of the IMA and the number of booklets books journals and news bulletins have been published over the years here are a few of the IMA's publications the first one family planning and abortion an Islamic view viewpoint a simple reference in response to complex questions of family planning, providing solutions to the questions of contraception. The second one, a practical guide for managing drug abuse. 
This study outlines the diagnosis of drug abuse and provides certain practical guidelines in assisting those caught in the web of such aberrations. Thirdly, fasting and the patient. Some guidelines on that. It provides solutions to issues faced by the fasting patient and useful information about general rules of fasting, medical issues related to women and miscellaneous issues related to the concerned Muslim. Next, the Muslim patient, a guide for healthcare professionals. Um, this is a concise work outline of basic religious precepts which concerns the day-to-day -day behavior of each Muslim individual. Next, it's the Sharia and organ transplant. And this work concerns two religious views, which is for and against the transplantation of human organs. Then the Islamic jurisprudence and blood transfusions. This work concerns the issue of blood transfusions and the reality of blood banks and the religious factors involved. And lastly, a healthy diet, Islam show the way. Present day, day dietary habits in affluent countries are very recent innovations representing an unprecedented unique nutritional development. And this has been linked to numerous diseases of modern living. Eating behavior as prescribed by the Quran and exemplified by the Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will certainly go a long way to preventing these modern scourges. And these booklets are obtainable from our national offices and of course the telephone numbers will be appearing on your screens and you are most welcome to contact the rooms. But this evening you are most welcome to contact the telephone number 0216960109. That is 0216960109. Anything relating to we discussing different types of cancers with our honored guest, Dr. Dilshad Asmo, and she's a dermatologist. Dr. Shukran for your patience once again, <laughs> and Shukran for being here. Dr. Very interesting topic, as every week, Alhamdulillah, the IM Ages give us such great topics and professional people to manage our topics for the benefit of all our viewers. Could you maybe explain to all our viewers how many different types of eczema do you actually get? I always tell my patients that when they ask me a question like this, think of Africa as being the continent and think of eczemas fitting into the different countries in Africa. So you do get a large variety of eczemas okay. and you can basically look at them as being intrinsic as yeah. coming from inside or extrinsic as coming from outside. Mm. But we do have a large number of eczemas that can be found okay. in All dermatology. Right. In dermatology. And Doctor, are there any uh, common causes, I would say? I know you just said, you know, it's a whole range that you get. But are, are there any common causes for eczema? I mean, that cause eczema, really. Well, generally, if you look, for example, at atopic eczema, mm. atopic eczema is the eczema that everyone knows about. It's the one where the children present with the flectural, that means in the elbows and behind the knees, mm -hmm. a type of eczema. That can have a genetic predisposition together with an environmental factor. Mm -hmm. Other eczemas may occur as a result of some trauma to the skin, as a result of maybe a deep vein thrombosis. Mm -hmm. So there's a large variation in the causes. I mean, the sun can also exacerbate eczema. Mm -hmm. So it's multifactorial. Okay, and as you just mentioned now, um, the atopic one, you know, um, how does that actually look? Does it cover the full entire body? Well, first of all, atopic eczema can occur in both children and adults. Mm -hmm. It can occur all over the body, but then you have different presentations in different age groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, generally, atopic eczema occurs in what I call a triad of conditions. So this can be associated with asthma, allergic rhinitis or hay fever and together with atopic eczema mm -hmm. and you sometimes find that there's a definite genetic predisposition mm -hmm. for example in children in babies you may just see eczema of their cheeks yeah. where it just looks red and flaky mm. and angry and then you can get it on their extensor surfaces which is the outermost aspects of their upper limbs and their lower limbs mm -hmm. and as they age you'll then get it in the classic sites mm -hmm. of the flexures behind the knees, inside the elbows, and then in adults you can get it in those sites, but you can also get it anywhere. And in the child, 
or in the adult, you can have generalized atopic eczema, which basically means the whole body. <laughs> We're seeing the, the, the slides on the screen now to all our viewers and you are most welcome to be part of our program 0216960109. The specialist dermatologist Dr. Dilshad Asmal, she's live in studio and she's ready to answer you know any topics related of course to eczema this evening and that is what we're discussing here. Doctor you just explained that does it actually mean when we are diagnosed with eczema does it persist forever? Well, that's an impossible question to answer. Okay. There is no data, no scientific research that can actually predict mm -hmm. when eczema will happen or when eczema will burn out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is that not particular the atopic eczema one that we're no, talking about? I or think is that the general it's family? It's the general of view when you're looking at eczema as a whole. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. general family of eczema. No oh. doctor, no specialist can predict the prognosis or the length of time of the skin disease. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the atopic one. In terms of treatments, what treatments are available? Well, you have specific treatments. For example, those would be the drug treatments, and there you can use your topical steroids. I know when everyone hears the word steroids, steroids. everyone sort of hyperventilates and needs <laughs> we oxygen. Run away. <laughs> yes, but remember that steroids at specialist level yeah. and at doctor level can be used in an extremely controlled environment. Okay. So obviously we use it to downgrade that initial inflammatory flare and we use it as your first line of therapy. Mm -hmm. But then medicine has advanced so much. And right. if you're looking at topical therapies, you also have things called steroid sparers. That means these are creams that don't cause skin thinning, don't cause bruising or redness of the skin. Mm -hmm. Then obviously if it's very severe, you can look at oral therapy, you can look at light therapy. But I think what's also so important, a good point to bring across is that moisturizing yes. emollients are such an important factor mm -hmm. in atopic eczema. Okay. And then there are general measures, things like in a child keep their nails short, mm -hmm. babies wear mittens, mm -hmm. you know, bath in non-fragranced products, non-fragrant soaps, tepid water, you know, use uh, bleach baths. I use a lot of bleach baths in my practice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also studies have shown that probiotics may aid with atopic eczema. All right. Great. Shukran so much, Doctor. The telephone numbers do appear on your screen, 0216960109. We're discussing different types of eczemas this evening with Dr. Dilshad Asmal. She's a dermatologist in private practice in Cape Town, and she's at the Rondebosch Medical Center, the Cape Town Mediclinic, as well as a consultant at the Military Hospital in Weinberg. Doctor, we need to go for our first ad break, inshallah. But to all, to, our, to all our viewers, please make use of this free consultation with our specialists in studio. We'll be back after the short break, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome back to the Islamic Nation of South Africa's Health Matters Comprehensive Chat. Our topic of discuss it, discussion this evening, different types of eczemas and I believe there's a call online, doctor. Let us go to the lines. Assalamualaikum and good evening. Hello. Hello. Hello, my dear. Please go ahead with your question. Doctor's listening. Sorry. Doctor's listening. You may go ahead with your question. My name is Ahmed Min. I'm calling you. I'm just finding out. I've got a daughter who is 15 years old. She's got eczema. And at the age of four years, the eczema went away. The minute she reached puberty, it started flaring up away. And now it's quite very prominent. It's coming out quite strongly on her face and under her arm folds and on her legs also by the folds. We were told to use prednisone and uh, uh, persevate, etc. And we're not too happy with it. And if you could just advise us, please. Okay, is that your only question to the doctor? You can, you can listen on the television. Doctor will answer, inshallah. Doctor? Well, first of all, your daughter has atopic eczema and she seems to have had this period of remission where it went away and then this flare, this recurrence of the eczema. Now, in terms of treatment of the eczema, if the eczema is overwhelming and you seem to have a large body surface area involved, your first line of therapy would be topical steroids. 
But as I mentioned before, if it's used in a very controlled manner and under strict supervision, you shouldn't be getting side effects. Obviously, like with any drug, if it is abused, then there are definite side effects that the patient can experience. But like I mentioned now, initially you can start off with the topical steroid, oral steroids true, two if it's very severe, and then downgrade to steroid sparers. But you must also understand that all specialists, all dermatologists, we love steroids. And that's our first drug, it's our go-to drug. And then we do what we call a taper. That means we decrease the potency of the drugs and try and get the patient away from the drug. If that doesn't work, then you either have to look at light therapy or oral therapy. But please discuss that with your dermatologist. Mm -hmm. Shukran so much, doctor. So, doctor, that uh, father needs to go back to the dermatologist or to the GP? Well, I think you have excellent GPs in the country. Okay. So, go back to the GP, discuss the problem with him or her. Right. And then, if the GP and the patient feels that they need a specialist opinion, that's what dermatologists are here for. Okay. All fine. we do is get. My little joke is that I don't even own a status quo. <laughs> But that's a joke. Yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. The telephone numbers appear on your screen 0216960109. I'd like to also read it out for our people that's got um, challenging maybe with the, with the eyesight. Topic of discussion very interesting, different types of eczemas, and the specialist is live in studio. You're most welcome to call anything relating to um, eczema, different types of eczema. That's our topic that we discussed discussing here this evening. Dr. Atopic pregnancy, uh, atopic um, eczema, as a doctor now mentioned, with that caller as well. Are there any particular symptoms in terms of besides the, skin, the itchy skin? Well, I think it's a clinical diagnosis for the doctor where you could either have an acute phase where it's red, oozy, crusty, and then you can get a chronic phase where it looks hard and dry and there's a term called lichenification mm -hmm. which means like leather so the texture of the skin changes mm -hmm. and then obviously you'll have associated dry skin but I mean the patient is in so much distress okay you know I'm sure the father who called earlier on yes. he really feels for his daughter mm -hmm. because her quality of life is severely affected by the skin disease mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And doctor, with that, as you just mentioned, um, you know, the quality of life are being affected. Do you also then refer your patients to maybe go for some therapy just to handle that? Um, the fact that, you know, it does affect the appearance of, of, of how you actually look. I think that's an important point and if it's warranted yeah. then definitely the patient must be referred mm -hmm. you know to a psychologist and then it's what you call a multidisciplinary approach mm -hmm. where you have lots of specialists in their field right. trying to help the patient. Okay, all right. Shukran so much doctor. Um, 0216960109 that's our telephone number live in studio and we're coming from Cape Town this evening we're discussing different types of eczema please be part of our program and hear your questions live on television with Dr. Dilshad Asmal. Doctor we basically discuss um, a topic um, eczema but in terms of your other uh, different types of, of, of eczema which are the ones that really affect mainly maybe the babies are there a particular eczema that can affect the babies because there's something called the cradle cap yes now that's a type of eczema called a seborrheic eczema and again it's an intrinsic eczema mm -hmm. and we talk about a yeast called malassezia yeah. that can be over proliferating in the skin yeah. now malassezia is a normal yeast we call it a normal commensal but in this skin condition you can actually get it mm -hmm. over proliferating and yes, it's called cradle cap, yeah. where the child will have these branny like yellowish thick scales. Right. And generally you see the appearance before the age of three months, but it okay. generally goes away later on at about six months to 12 months. And then you can get a reappearance, mm -hmm. late teens, but basically adulthood, where again, the patient would present with seborrheic eczema. Mm -hmm. And basically that only affects the, the, the top of the skull or can it also affect other parts of the body? Well, seborrheic eczema is mainly the scalp and the face, but it can, for example, in babies affect their underarms, their groin area. You can get it on the chest of adults. Mm -hmm. So it can, it's not just concentrated into one specific position, but that's the generalized position mm -hmm. where it does appear. And what are the causes of that one, Doctor? 
Well, like I mentioned, it's an intrinsic, so it comes from within us. Okay. And there's this yeast yeah. called malassezia. You know, together with this inflammatory response, and there's a skin barrier functioning, so it's like an addition sum mm -hmm. to get to this end stage of seborrheic dermatitis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is there a certain period time frame that, you know, the person or the patient will be going through that? Or will they just be, if you use your treatment for a while, it will all disappear? Well, generally in babies, it does it disappear, does. Okay. and in infants. In adults, it can be a chronic relapsing condition. So with treatment, it gets better, and then it gets worse. And there's certain conditions where you can have a generalized form of seborrheic eczema. For example, in Im immunosuppressed patients, organ transplant patients, HIV patients, even patients with Parkinson's disease mm -hmm. can have a widespread eczema mm -hmm. of the seborrheic type. Mm -hmm. So it looks different, it can appear differently, exactly all the points I mentioned. Thank you very much. 0216960109, the telephone number does appear on your screen. Please be part of our very, very interesting topic uh, this evening. You can phone in if you are the patient or you somebody suffering with the, uh, a, a type of eczema or let one, you know, one of the family members phone him if there's any concerns because the special, specialist is in studio, Dr. Dilshad Asmal, and she will be giving great advice. And I always say, doctor, it's free advice. You can only call us, pick up that, line, that telephone and call us and the specialist will give you basically free advice, alhamdulillah. Um, doctor, in terms of the, the, the cradle cap one, it, it does probably affect the hair growth as well, does it? Well, to a degree, but remember also that they're thick, branny like scales. Yes. You know, that's adherent, that's stuck onto the yes. top of the scalp. Yeah. You know, so when a mom looks at that, yeah. all she sees is the branny, thick like scales. Okay. You know, so from a visual point of view, the child is totally and utterly unaware okay. of this disease. Yes. You, well, usually unaware. Yes. But yes. it's more the parent who mm -hmm. looks at it and it's aesthetically not pleasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is that the only thing that, uh, do, does it have any other effects on that little infant, on the baby, besides not looking very nice or very pretty? Well, it can be spread to other areas, like I mentioned before, the underarms, the groin area, you know, parts of the body. But um, generally, it's not really itchy. Mm -hmm. There could be irritation. And remember, in a young baby, you don't really give antihistamines. Mm -hmm. So you try and downgrade that inflammatory response yes. as much as possible with just topical therapies yes. and nothing internal. Yes, yes. We've got some slides um, on the television screen as well, um, as Dr. mentioned. And those are the different types of allergic contact dermatitis. So that those are the different types of eczemas that you get. And it can be very, very severe if you look at those pictures, Doctor. Mm. Yeah. It can be very severe. But there is hope for all our viewers who's been diagnosed, or the patients who's been diagnosed with that. I think what's important to understand is that there is no cure for eczema. Okay. What Dr. we can do... Caller. Can we quickly just take that call? Sorry to interrupt. Let us go to the lines. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Well, alaikum salam. Well, alaikum salam, dear. I'm phoning from Fort Elizabeth. Mashallah. Please uh, pose your question to the doctor. Um, my granddaughter is about a year and 11 months and she's suffering from this eczema here at the back of her leg in the groin and I would like to know if there is any specific uh, diet for it. Well diet does play a role in eczema but sometimes there's too much emphasis on diet and eczema but there's definite links between for example milk, eggs, soya and peanuts. But you know, then you look at your other host of factors that come into play. But um, yes, diet does affect certain patients with eczema. Thank you very much. Is that um, the only question that you have? Okay, the, 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 the listener, the viewer probably dropped the line. Thank you so much, doctor. But doctor, that's a very young child in terms of, you know, diet. So it can affect any ages. Yes, I think so, and I think that's why, like, if you look at babies who are yes. breastfed, purely breastfed, yes. and then they get eczema, yes. they're not eating anything. Mm -hmm. You know, they're purely getting the milk from their mums. Right. So there has to be other factors mm -hmm. that, you know, are contributing to the eczema. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you very much. 0216960109, that's the number to dial, and it's uh, we're coming from Cape Town this evening, and we're discussing different types of eczema with our dermatologist, I am a member live in studio, and you're most welcome to be part of this program. Very, very interesting, because I think, Doctor, I'm going to pose this question in terms of weather. Where's the best province to stay not to be diagnosed or to run away from the eczema? Is there something like that? Environment definitely plays Does a role. It? <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, I live in Cape Town, mm -hmm. so obviously I'm going to be totally biased mm -hmm. and say Cape Town, mm -hmm. you know, is the place to stay. Right. But yes, some people find that a dry climate may exacerbate it, a humid climate may exacerbate it. Right. So, I mean, what are you going to become? A traveling gypsy, <laughs> you know, which makes it very hard. <laughs> which so makes you, it very you're hard. You're going to have to control your eczema and the place that you live in. Okay, thank you very much, 0216960109. Any questions relating to different types of uh, eczema, that's what we're discussing here this evening with our dermatologist. We need to go for a break, inshallah, but stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the Islamic Medical Association of South Africa's Health Matters comprehensive chat. We're discussing different types of eczemas with Dr. Dilshad Asmal and you're most welcome to contact us 0216960109. Anything relating to our topic and doctor will be very willing and able to assist you inshallah. Doctor, there's an eczema called Venus. The Venus or Venus? Yes, Venus dermatitis <laughs> okay. or gravitational eczema. Gravitational eczema, I believe. Can you just explain to us a little bit about that? I believe it's, it's got to do with the legs or something. Mm. Okay, but you're the specialist. Please okay. explain to us. This a is an bit. eczema that we get on our lower limbs, especially our shin area, mm -hmm. and it can be associated with deep vein thrombosis, cellulitis of the legs. It can be associated with varicose veins, mm. a venous insufficiency and long-standing so people who stand for a very long time mm -hmm. are predisposed to this eczema and the eczema presents on the shins you can have one focal area you can have confluent patches you know it can be circumferential mm -hmm. so it could go all around um, the skin those aren't the proper slides okay we've right? got more slides yes, coming there are the slides um, and again you know it can be quite debil debilitating. Mm -hmm. It can present like an acute, wet, weepy rash. Okay. And then with time, you can get darkness of skin, you can get thick skin, you can get cracks on the skin. And it can be extremely uncomfortable mm -hmm. and debilitating for the patient. And doctor, does that affect males and females? Yes, yes. There and isn't really um, a predisposition. Yeah. you know in males or females yes I'm just thinking now of ladies having that on your legs and you know how do you actually keep yourself warm during winter it is a difficult condition mm -hmm. to treat but mm -hmm. um, you know generally if you're looking at therapy therapies can be as simple as don't stand for a long time okay. walk the more walking you do the better it is mm -hmm. try and elevate your legs mm -hmm. you know even put um, something under your bed to elevate your bed mm -hmm. and then you look at venous compression stockings right. to actually help mm -hmm. to you know help with the pressure in the veins mm -hmm. so you're actually trying to downgrade your triggers for your eczema so being diagnosed with that type of eczema does it actually mean because you you it, it will not affect any other part of the body it will only affect the lower part which is the legs yes Doctor, there's a caller. Let us go to the okay. lines. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the program. Wa alaikum salam. Shukran. Afwan, um, please pose your question. For the doctor. Yes, go ahead. Doctor's listening, my dear. You can you can pose your question. Have we lost that caller? So sorry if we've lost that caller. Okay, caller's still there. Can you hear us? No, I think we've we've actually lost that caller. So sorry. Please re, um, try to call us back 0216960109, and doctors very able and willing to be to answer any calls relating to the different types of of eczema, and that is our topic this evening. 
Doctor, talking about complications of that type of eczema, which is the gravitational eczema, mm. what complications are we looking at? Well, you can get secondary skin infections, and then you're looking at bacterial infections caused by a bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus or another bacteria called Streptococcus. Mm -hmm. And then you can look in associated dry skin, you can get a contact allergy, so if you use creams or ointments yes. on there for a long time, you can get a reaction pattern to it. Doctor, our caller is back. Can we quickly yes. go to the caller? Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome back to, to the studios. Please pose your question. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Walaikum Salaam. Um, my son, I haven't had it diagnosed, but he's got like uh, small pimples on his cheeks from the time he was small. So I'm not sure if it's eczema or what. Uh, the small pimples on the cheek can actually be um, quite a few conditions. It can range from infantile acne, um, or it can be something called keratosis pilaris. Which Sorry, can I can't be, hear you too clearly. What did you say? It could, ra it could be a variety of conditions. Okay. It could range from conditions like infantile acne mm -hmm. to keratosis pilaris. Okay. Um, it could be eczema, but I think if you're very concerned about it, visit your GP, your general practitioner, so you get a definitive diagnosis okay. to actually but find not, out what it could be. It doesn't trouble him or anything. It's just like small pimples all over his cheeks. Does it trouble you? Sorry? Does it trouble you? No, it just looks, um, doesn't look nice. It's something that's not, um, doesn't trouble him or it's just something that doesn't look nice. Well, if you're worried about it, because obviously you are concerned, then go in for a proper diagnosis. Okay. You know, because um, hearing about this is difficult. Dermatology is very visual. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when we look at a condition, all we do is skin. So it's simpler for us to diagnose, to touch okay. and to feel and to see. It makes our lives very easy. Okay. All right. All, all the right. best. All the best, my dear. And thank okay, you very thank much you. for the call. Right. Salaam. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. 0216960109. That's the telephone number to dial. And we're discussing different types of eczemas with our specialist live in studio. Doctor, before we took our call, um, you were still explaining to us regarding the complications for gravitational eczema. Like I mentioned, you can have secondary bacterial infections. You can have a widespread eczema, you can have a contact allergy as a result of the ointments and creams mm -hmm. and um, you know your eczema can become quite overwhelming and the patient can be in a lot of discomfort mm -hmm. especially if they're fissured or cracked. Okay. Doctor, there's another caller. Let us go to the lines. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the program. Wa alaikum salam. Shukran. I think I got cut off earlier. Shem, I'm um, terribly sorry my dear. No, no, Please no, pose no, no. your question. Okay. Um, my question was, um, is there anything I can get over the counter? Um, my, when I, the eczema on my hands, it's very really, it's really dry, so I wanted to know is there something that I can uh, use? Because even now I notice that um, peeling potatoes even affects my skin, so is there something extra that I can carry around in my handbag or something like that? Right. Is that your only question, my dear? Yeah. All right. Is. Doctor, would you like to pose the question or are you going to answer? Um, what you have is you have an irritant contact dermatitis. So that means a chemical or a physical agent is causing an irritation to your skin and affecting your barrier functioning. Okay. And as a result of that, all your natural moisturizers, your natural oils are okay. um, not are being affected and your barrier functioning of your skin is not optimal. Your okay. basic line of therapy number one would be to wear gloves. Okay. Right, so you're trying to avoid your triggers. Then mm. emollients are very good. So go to your pharmacist. Your pharmacists yes. are excellent and well versed in good barrier creams. And okay. they're excellent products um, okay. in South Africa. So okay. go and get a good barrier product and if you've got this chronic hand dermatitis, you obviously have to treat it because it seems to be negatively impacting you in yes, your daily yes, life. Yes. 
I think I think we're losing that line here. But um, Doctor, we've got the the basics of of her question. Thank you so much to that viewer for that uh, very interesting question. I said she she mentioned even if she peels potatoes, it affects her. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Her skin, unfortunately, is yeah. insensitive to yeah. the potatoes. You can get tomatoes irritating the skin. But she needs to wear gloves because that would be one of the first uh, things that she could do to protect her skin. Okay. And, and is I that, that yeah. surgi the surgical gloves? Or you can get good rubber gloves. Okay. You know, you can go to your lo local supermarket. Right. Or there's specialist glove providers. Okay. Like in my practice, yes. we have someone who supplies Okay. Special gloves for patients. Yes. You know, that are maybe non irritant, latex free, etc., right. etc. Et right. So you have to see what suits you. Yes. I did hear part of the question where she said she's been on topical steroids, mm -hmm. and I still come down to topical steroids would be your first line of therapy. Right. But you'd also have to do good barrier creams, right. wear the gloves. Mm -hmm. You know, initially use the steroids, downgrade to steroid sparers. Doctor, it's not there, a simple condition to yeah. treat. Is there a certain type of um, soaps or that she can use or must that also be tested? Doctor, you need to just hold that answer. Okay. There's a caller holding. Let us go to the lines. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the program. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, go ahead. Salam. Wa alaikum salam. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, you're speaking to Lukman. I have like a, a, a scar on my leg for, say, the past 15 years or so. What happened? I had an ulcer that burst on my leg, and ever since it turned black. I tried bio oil for a year, and then I tried snail gel for a year, but nothing seemed to help. What's your suggestion? So basically, you're calling about a dark mark on your leg as a result of having a previous ulcer? Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, unfortunately, that can be really difficult to treat. And if your depth of pigmentation, the darkness is too deep to try and skin bleach it, right. won't work. I mean, your bio oil um, is basically trying to moisturize the skin. Snail gel, with all due respect, will do nothing. Okay. Um, you'll have to use maybe a skin bleacher, something to try and lighten it. But again, if your depth of pigmentation is too deep, Right. It's not going to go away. And this seems to be an extremely old scar. 15 years is a very long time yeah, for you to have time. the hyperpigmentation, Gee. that darkness of skin. Right. And tell me, what about skin grafting? Would that help? Well, skin grafting, if you've got, for example, a wound on your skin, then right. you skin graft. If you've got a cancer on your skin, right. then you skin graft. But you're not going to do skin grafting for a dark area of skin. Right. You know, there are complications to skin grafting also. And you seem to have healthy skin besides it being of a darker color. Correct. That seems to be your primary concern. Yeah. So skin grafting is definitely a no-no. Gee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, Doctor... So, there's basically nothing I can do about it. Well, you can try skin bleaching. Yeah. Okay. You know, but okay. that should go to a specialist dermatologist yeah. for them to prescribe a skin bleacher for you. Go All right. right. Thank you very much to that. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Very interesting questions that we're getting, doctor. But unfortunately, we do need to go for another ad break, inshallah. But the lines are still open on 0216960109. We'll be back right after this short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the last segment of this program, different types of eczemas we're discussing this evening. There's a call on the line, let us go straight to the lines. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this program. Wa alaikum salam. I just speak to the doctor please. Please go ahead, doctor can, can hear you. Yes, uh, you see I've got a problem with the itches in my body and it started from my legs and uh, you see after it started from my legs and it went up to my uh, back, my hands and my whole body. And what happened then also my buttocks. Now what happens, you know, when the time when I am uh, like, I want to scratch and it's unbearable the way I want to scratch and it starts bleeding. 
and uh, it, it actually runs like, you know, something is running onto my skin. That's how I feel. And I just want to scratch and scratch. And now I feel coming up to my neck. I did go to the doctor, but the doctor says that uh, I need to go to hospital. I went into blood tests and stuff. But they say I am not a diabetic, but it's uh, itches. Maybe I'm allergic to something. They gave me some medication and stuff. So nothing helped me at all, and I'm suffering so much with this itches. And not only me, my mom as well. My mom is 92 years old, and she's also got the same problem as me. You see, and I don't really know what was in this. Can you give me advice? What am I to use? Oh, what am I to do? Please, so much. I will listen on TV. Shukran, so much. Shukran. Oh. Doctor, would you like to ask a question before uh, you answer? Yes. Do you have a skin rash or do you just feel itchy skin? Okay, I think we've lost. We've, we've lost the caller. Okay, because it's very important to see if she's got an associated itch with a skin rash mm -hmm. or whether she has no clinical signs and she just feels itchy skin mm -hmm. because then that opens up a whole host of other skin conditions that right. she could have but oral antihistamines would be a first-line therapy right. um, her gp yes. right has obviously worked out a game plan for her mm -hmm. she needs to discuss uh, with the gp what he or she is thinking about mm -hmm. and then if need be go and see a specialist mm -hmm. to see what's going on and then she mentioned her mom Right. Also has That's itchy right. skin. Yes. So, you know, to make sure that it's not a skin condition that they have passed on to each other mm -hmm. in terms of they are skin conditions. Okay. You know, with close contact. Yeah. Um, so I think a good history. A yeah. good history in her is paramount. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Doctor. There's another caller holding. Let us go straight to the lines. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Waalaikum salam. You may go ahead with your question. Okay, thank you. I have actually two questions for the doctor. Go ahead. The, the, the first one is that uh, I have uh, chronic uh, eczema due to uh, um, extreme dry and sensitive skin on my hands. And um, the ointment caused to thin the skin, you know, it's, it's like a, actually very thin. What can I use for it actually, you know, to feed it to actually to... I sort of, you know, just so it can uh, uh, um, give a relief to the thinness of my the, of the skin. Thing. And then the second question is, what is what did the doctor mean by the you know the bleach part? What what is the that he was to use? Okay. Well, first of all, it sounds like you have a hand eczema, and your hand eczema can be caused by a var variety of factors. Maybe an allergic contact or a primary irritant dermatitis. So again, find out what your triggers are. Wear protective gloves. Your skin, if it has thinned, it's extremely difficult to get your skin to the way it was before. But barrier products, you know, good moisturizers, good emollients will aid your skin. You know, in trying to make it more supple and more hydrated. Yeah. and trying to give your hands some moisturizing. Obviously, okay. chronic steroid use will yeah. thin the skin. So you okay. actually have to watch how much topical steroids you are using. And then look at the newer generation drugs, which are steroid sparers, creams or ointments that have no steroids in it, so they can't thin your skin. Okay. Right? Now, when we're looking at bleach baths, I'm actually looking at what I call jit baths. And if you do... Uh, a layman's internet search you'll find it well documented and so I basically my patients who have chronic atopic eczema I make them do bleach baths okay all right thank you very much shukran so okay. much and all of the best Doctor, maybe you could just explain to us a little bit about these bleach baths. Do we just jump in a bleach bath? <laughs> no, generally what I tell my patients yeah. to do is take three caps, yeah. not cups, three caps of jick in one full bath. Yeah. Right? And to line it for about 10 minutes, about mm -hmm. twice a week. You know, there are studies that show that bleach baths are aiders 
Okay. So they're helping hands. They're not specifically hardcore therapy. Right. It's like studies that are showing that patients with atopic eczema should be on probiotics. Mm -hmm. And you know, moms who are pregnant yes. and who do have atopic eczema should also be on probiotics. Mm -hmm. But these are small studies coming out. Mm. So I just ask my patients to use these helping hands. Okay. And success, are, are there any successful cases? No. Reports? Yes. That's, okay. I obviously have patients who hate bleach baths with an absolute passion, <laughs> right? But they're few and far between. I actually okay. can count them on All my right. fingers and toes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. 0216960109. That's the number to dial. We're discussing different types of eczema here this evening. Dr. Discoid eczema. Please explain to us what exactly is that? Okay. Sounds like a very, very big word. Okay, discoid or nomulo eczema. Um, the eczema actually looks like round coins, hence the name discoid eczema. Mm -hmm. And again, the cause, we don't really know. In medicine, I always say we love to thumbsuck. <laughs> so we think of associated causes, right. which could be thermal burns, which could be an insect bite, which can be a secondary bacterial infection, mm -hmm. you know, that could be causing this. And this type of eczema is generally found on the limbs, right. but it can be on the body. Yeah. You know, you have it um, more in males than in females, and the skin can have this oval discoid appearance, mm -hmm. and the surface of the skin, again, can be wet, oozy, or red, okay. or it can be crusted and lichenified thick. All right. Doctor, there's a caller. Sorry, okay. sorry to interrupt. Let us go to the lines. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum salam. my dear. Please go ahead with your question. Okay, shukran. Um, doctor, I have a toddler and um, he has eczema on his leg. Um, like the dry, patchy, itchy eczema. Hello? Yes. And I want to know, will giving him allergic to relieve the itchiness that he, that he experiences? Yes, allergics is an oral antihistamine. So okay. it will definitely help him with his itchiness. Are you putting anything on it? Yes, yes. Um, I am putting um, uh, moisturizer on there just for the for the for the dryness. And when he gets out of a bath, I so, um, like a, a Vaseline base. And do you find it. it helping, or does he still have what you would call dry patches still evident okay. on his legs? Sorry, that can't hear you. But he still has those dry patches still evident yes. on his legs. Okay. Well, yeah. if he still has that, then you would need topical therapy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to actually downgrade that inflammatory response. So she's definitely being a good mother, oh, you know, oh, by moisturizing, yes, et cetera. Yes, but yes. I think that the child needs a bit more than just a plain moisturizer. Okay. And doctor, is, is that the gravitational eczema that no, we're talking about? No, that sounds like that? a childhood eczema. She talked about a toddler. Okay. Okay, gravitational you find in older patients. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Doctor, we have about a few minutes left to our program. I would like you just to give us a, a round up, a, a, you know, a brief. Patients suffering with eczema how do they need to manage their life? Because it can affect really the quality of your life. No, eczema definitely can have a negative impact yes. on the life and the family members. Yes. A baseline uh, would be try and hydrate your skin and moisturize your skin. It definitely helps with the skin barrier defect mm -hmm. and the skin barrier functioning. Mm -hmm. You know, try and find out what your triggers could be. Mm -hmm. So sort out the triggers. Try and do simple things, like I mentioned early on, soap-free cleansers, yeah. you know, non-fragrance products, tepid bath water, moisturize to the nth degree. And I think that if it, you have an overwhelming eczema, visit your day hospital, visit your GP. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are able to, see a specialist, because there's definitely creams, topical therapy, oral therapy can that, that can give a patient back their quality of life, which is so important. Absolutely, very, very important. Doctor, and can different types of fabrics irritate um, the skin when you have eczema? Yes, wool and synthetic fabrics can definitely irritate the skin. So it's always nice to tell the patient use cotton fabrics or smooth fabrics. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get your skin irritated. Your skin is already irritated. Right. You don't want to add on to the irritation. Mm -hmm. 
In terms of their diet, um, we, uh, we understand, you know, we need to find out really what irritates the skin. But how important is water? I know you are a water junkie. No, I love water. <laughs> I love water. Well, how important is it to hydrate from the inside? Well, I think that water is important not only for your skin, right. but for your, all your internal organs, your kidneys, your liver, your whole body. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to try and get in as much water as you can get in. Right, water has been found clinically to actually help with the whole body. Mm. So for everyone, they don't have to be a water junkie like me, <laughs> right? But just drink more than you would normally drink, of and course. try and rather drink water than you know drink Coke or orange juice or stuff oh, like fuzzy, that. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. Yes. There's a caller on the line. Let Okay, no, there's no call on the line. Unfortunately, we still have about one minute left to our program. Doctor, um, very, very interesting. And I just want to also, you know, inform our viewers that doctors in private practice in Cape Town. So whenever you're in holiday in Cape Town, please visit her. She's beautiful. She's young and she's fresh. And she's very, very professional. She's at Rhonda Bosch Medical Center at the Cape Town Medic Clinic, as well as the military hospital in Weinberg. And she's a consultant there. Um, very important important 30 seconds how do we need to look after our skins summer's coming I think that I always tell my patients to be sun savvy right sun savvy means wear good sunblock mm -hmm. an SPF of 30 or higher mm -hmm. an SPF 50 I'm an SPF 50 junkie okay. and so are my children <laughs> right what's your junkie SPF 50, SPF 50 junkie, junkie. All, all my right. patients know that um, try and avoid the sun during peak times, All right. like between 11 and 3. Mm -hmm. Wear a wide brimmed hat. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going swimming, and especially for children, wear rash vests. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, it's important. And obviously, get your children into this habit of wearing sunblock. Mm -hmm. Because if you lead by example, yeah. they're going to continue in life being sun savvy. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Shukran so much, Doctor. It was so, so lovely having you here. Thank you. Dr. Dilshad Asmal, she's a, a dermatologist in private practice in Cape Town. And that wraps up, our pro wraps up this wonderful program this evening. Of course, next week we'll have another IMA member live in studio and we will be discussing exam stress and how to really manage it with Dr. Imtiaz Hussain. We know our, our people, are, our, our kids um, are busy writing right now and we wish them all of the best inshallah but next week stay tuned and the honorable doctor will be giving us great tips how to handle exam stress from myself Najwa Muhammad Ladi and my beautiful guests we want to wish you a lovely lovely week ahead fi amanillah wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh